Hello, everybody. Good afternoon or good evening. Good morning. Whatever it is, it might be wherever you might be on the face of the earth. It's great to have you here today. I'm just trying to figure out what to do with my with my phone because I can get comments from it. I hope the sound is fine. Hi, Sharon. You made it. That's great. It's great to have you here. Um, let me see. Good afternoon or good evening. Good morning. Whatever it is, it might be wherever you might be on the face of the earth. It's great to have you here today. I'm just trying to figure out. Okay. I'll sort it out in a minute. It's just to be able to get your comments and everything and not have to lean forward, but I should have that sorted out. No few. So I hope you've all been enjoying the sunshine and the lovely weather we've been having. Yes, it's been a bit wet, but all in all. It's been better than what it's, it has been over the last few weeks. So it's great to have you back here today. And today we're going to be working on the Hope by Mrs. H. This bag was sort of like put together when the pandemic started. And um, Samantha was just trying to sort of cheer every single person up and just give us something simple. Give us hope just to give us, you know that looking forward into the future that things are going to be better. So the pattern was released on the 1st of May. So if you haven't gotten yours yet, you can go to the Mrs. H website and you can get your pattern there. As well as the original pattern with the one side, with a panel that's made up of just one complete frame, you have another one where you can sort of break up the panels and you can have a pocket in it as well. So that is given as well when you buy the original pan, um, the original pattern. Today we're just going to do the original pattern. And although I have the panel one printed out, the one with the pocket on the side, you can see it has like three different colors. When you when you have the pattern, you'll understand what I mean. Although I have that printed out, we won't be doing that. Monica will be doing a hack of the whole handbag. I think it's on Sunday and Monday. 16th and 17th thereabouts. So what exactly she'll be doing, I'm not 100% sure, but she will be working on the hope. So I don't want to sort of move into whatever it is she wants to do. So I'll just stick to the original pattern for today. And then um, we'll take it from there. So uh, my son has just walked in. He just came back from his exam. So I just, <laughs> hey, how are you? Not right now. I'm live. I'll see you later. He says hi, though he didn't say hi, he's waving. <laughs> so yeah, um, so it's great to have you all here. And um for this pattern, we don't have a lot of hardware with it, which is really, really great. And um, you're going to need exterior fabric, lining fabric, and a construct contrast fabric. Then you're going to need um medium weight interfacing. You're going to need form interfacing and um, depending on, you know, you as a person, some people don't like using foam. So sometimes I use um, wadding instead of the foam, but yeah, you can use whatever it is you like to make your bag as squishy and, you know, nice as you want it to be. This particular pattern has not been designed for thicker fabric. So bear that in mind when you're choosing your fabric. There are lots of people that have made it in different types of fabric and you know in um, vinyl in leather in <clears throat> different types of thicker fabric but it's up to you if you feel your sewing machine can take the weight you know the heavy weight please go ahead but pattern was originally written just for quilt and cotton so bear that in mind when you're choosing as well then we're going to need a thin plastic um sort of like cutting mat or something just for the base, just to sort of 
give it a nice sturdy base. So if you're going to be adding that, just get a thin chopping mat or a plastic canvas and use that. I rushed into Asda the other day and I got this. It's a pack of three. I think it's a bit thick, but it will work anyway. Yes, it is slightly thick, but um, as long as I can cut it and I should have enough implements to sort of cut that. It's still thin compared to regular ones. And um, so I'll be using one of those. So if you're in the UK and you're looking for something, as they have those, and um, you'll need a number five zipper, a number three zipper. And like I said, it's minimal hardware for this one. So you can use a metal zip end, which I won't be using. I don't know why, but I just don't like blink on anything. Um, I'm more of a tomboy than, you know, a lady so anyway but if you do want to please feel free we um, use um, a metal zip end for the outer zip and um, the last but not the least you would need bag feet and I have a ton of them in different colors like I said when we get to it we'll cross that bridge but I'm not sure if I'm going to be using feet or anything because normally my bags never sit on the floor for any reason, but you never know. So that's what we would be needing for this particular hope bag. And I hope that as we're making this, it gives us sort of like an insight into the future. It puts a smile on our face and that we're able to sort of think past every single thing that's happening around us and see the light at the end of the tunnel. So let us start. If you've printed out your patterns, you should have one, two, three, four for the original, for the original one. And I'm just going to start by cutting out all the pieces, taping them all together like we normally do, because it's always back to the drawing board, back, you know, on to just start every single thing from scratch. And then we'll cut out the different fabrics. As usual, I'll be using um, a camera fabric. Though they're all nice muted tones for this one, I I just prefer the colors this time. So this would be the main outer body. This would be the lining fabric because I always like the wow effect when I open up a bag. Why? I don't know, but I just like it. And um, that would be the contrast, which would be handles and the base. So, and then I have so few here from Castle, from Casting Handmade. And this was um, gifted to me by Samantha, Mrs. H, because she got a lot of it from, um, from Monica, who sells them in the US. So she's just sent me a few, you know, well, she sent me some, well, some of it to test out and everything. And first impressions, it really, really feels nice and it really, really feels good. So I haven't used it before. We'll be using it together. Samantha used it for her last so along. So she has all of that. So if you were, if you joined her for that, you would have seen her use it and she would have explained a bit more. But for now, it's solely US based and um, it's so fuse. And um, anybody else joined us since? Hi, Nova. And everybody else that's online as well. Hello, though you haven't, yeah. though you haven't left any messages. I know that some of you are all on there. So hello, everybody. And um, we're going to swiftly go into cutting out our little tiny pieces and um, putting them all together. So my trusty rotary cutter. So straight lines I cut with a rotary cutter and a ruler. 
And anything that's curved or slightly shaped, I use a scissors, um, a paper scissors for that. Like every single thing, preparation is the key. Yes, it's the most boring part of the whole thing, but it is the key part of every single thing we've got to do. And though it says um, we should do this in four days, I'm hoping we'll be able to get through it before in less than four days. Well, you just never know. So... Um, Squeezing through these now. And please, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comment section and I'll try and pick them up as I go. I know lots of other people have already made um, the hope because. Um, it was in the bag of the month club and then since um since it came out on the first i know i've seen lots of different um makes so um i know lots of other people have made it so if you just want to like pipe in or comment on something please feel free to well here's to learn together and as usual this is the first time i'm making this Okay, just being careful with the curves and making sure that I don't snip the wrong things. And then the last one. So um, those are the four pieces we need, and now we're going to sort of um, pin them all together to form our 
to form our um, pattern. So you have the, they're all labeled. So you have the C, you have the B, and you have the E. A is, um, you can rotary cut, the A part you can rotary cut. So the only ones we would need to stick together, Since, oh, sorry. Yes, there's B as well. So I thought I had lost the B. So we have B that we need to tape together, and we have E that we need to tape together, and C we don't have to tape together. So starting with So this is the blue Peter moment. When we blue Peter every single thing together and hope for the best. There we go. Okay, and then, so that's E done. Same thing we do for B. So, um, so that's um, B, that's C, D we're going to be cutting with a rotary cutter and that's E. So that's all taped together, the three pieces that we need. And um, like I said, if you're going to be doing sort of like the, um, the pieced front, then you would need to do the I, J, yeah, the I, J and the H I J, which you will just need to sort of piece together like we did these ones. And once they're done, you're going to cut out your pieces following the instructions. All the instructions are already in the pattern. It's a separate, it's a separate um, pattern from, it's a cutting pattern as in the pattern you need to cut out. It's just slightly separate from the main hope bag pattern. And once you cut that out, all the instructions to sort of put it all together is all there. So that's if you want the pieced front with the pocket in front. So once now that we've done that, I'm just going to get the labels because the labels do come in very, very handy. And I always like to have those close by as well so that as I'm interfacing each and every single piece, I can sort of label it and I can pick it up easily as I go as I go along. Okay. Last but not least. So with this one, we have A to 
G plus an extra one, which I would say H, but G is one, two, three. So we have quite a few. A, B, C, D, E, F. G, one, two, three. And then the very last one, which is just the base, the um, plastic base at the bottom. So I'm just going to hide those in the corner there so I don't lose them. And then we start with the fabric. As usual, I've sort of um, done a table of what I need to cut and how many of each I need to cut because it just makes it easier. I just stick it up as I go, as I cut each one out. So we're going to start with A, which is would be the contrast. So I need So for A, we need one contrast, we need one main, but then we need the same for the contrast as well, which is the D. We need the same measurements as well, and it's going to be the contrast, so I'm going to cut that out as well at the same time so that um, I don't have to revisit this bit. Okay, so that is A and D done. Well, almost done, not fully 100% done. So I come here, I've done that, and I've done that. So this would be D, two of them, and I would only need one of these cut in half. So that's A and D, and I'd have to get the... Um, once I cut the interface in and I start to put that on as well, then it's going to make life a lot easier. So A and D, done. <laughs> then the next one is B, which is the exterior fabric. And we're cutting that from the pattern piece. So that's B. B is one of the ones we've, um, we've put together on the, um, with the pattern. So we're going to cut that out as well. And for B. Now, if you're using the... Um, the pieced um, pocket, the pieced piece, then you would need to cut only one exterior from the um, for B. But if you're not using the uh, pieced piece, then you would need to cut two for the exterior. And you're cutting on the you're cutting on on the fold. So.
So that would be the exterior fabric cut on the fold. So you pin down your pattern to your fabric. And because we are cutting two on the fold, I'm going to cheat as usual because I don't want to have to do this twice. I have to make sure the other one goes all the way up. Actually, I might not be able to cheat with this one because I have to make sure that I have more than enough for the other side. So I will do this one first and cut. Ruler. I misplace every single thing these days. No matter how hard I try, my mind just goes somewhere else. So start with the straight lines and then carefully trim off the Carefully trim off the curve. Hi, Verna, how are you? Hope everything goes well at the doctors. So this is the second piece. I'm going to try and cut that from the rest of the fabric now. So that's um, one and two cut. 
now I have to figure out which one is where the right side is and where the wrong side is, but I'll figure that out when I get, you know, when I get to it, I'll sort it out. So that's um B cut out, and then I would need two. So that's B cutting pattern. I'll need foam and interfacing cut when I get to the foam stage. Then the next one is the C, which I need to cut out of the exterior. And um, I'll be cutting two of this as well. It's not going to be enough. Now I've got to remember not to cut off my curve, but I shall play with this and see how it goes. So that's the fold for both of them. Yep. Hi, Cheryl, how are you? So that's um, two, and um, like the other one, we will get to the um, <clears throat> to the lining to the interfacing when I start cutting out all the interfacing. Then the next thing is, so I have A, B, C, and I have D as well. So E is um the lining bottom so i have to put two of these in the lining fabric and that would be that So this is going to be on the fold as well. Hmm. I'm trying to see if doesn't matter. Oh, I could just do it that way. It should be that. On the fold. It should be sideways, but if I don't want it sideways, I have it on the fold. I 
I'm trying to decide based on the pattern that's on the um, fabric how I want it to be. Uh, okay. So with the um, E, the lining bottom, which is the pattern piece, I'm going to be needing two of those. So to save myself having to do this twice, I'm going to pin and cut like I normally do. So I have it all layered up. Then you pin to an end of its life. So it does not move. I know some people prefer to sort of um, interface all the pieces as in big massive piece of fabric, you interface it and then you begin to cut out all the pieces and stuff. But I just like to do a crude cut first, then cut the interface into the exact size, and then once the interfacing has been attached to it, I cut off any excess that's on the side. Okay, and so those are my two pieces one on the fold and two on the fold. Then we need the then interfacing, which we're not yet at. Then we need to cut out a pocket piece in the lining fabric, which I have abundance of. And it's, um, what you need to cut out is already in the patterns anyway. So just look into your pattern and, um,
So that's the pattern piece cut. So that's um, pocket. That is E, that is C. If you've already made it, please carry on having a confab amongst yourselves while I do the boring bit. It's just that the boring bit needs to be done. So, just putting all my pins in. And that's the pocket, and then you have one, two, three, and that's the base which we can cut at our leisure. Then, so the G, like I said, the G comprises three parts, and you can just cut those with your rotary cutter. So you have G1, G2, G3, and all the measurements are there, and they should all be cut out from the lining fabric. So grab your lining fabric if you did a big massive chunk like i did then you would have more than enough okay that won't work so the first one is So that is G2. That is G1 and <coughs> okay. And that is G3. So I've cut C, I've cut the lining, I've cut the pocket, and I've cut G123. Now interfacing based on A. So like I said, um, 
<clears throat> the interfacing was um, gifted to me by Samantha and it's from Castine. Castine Handcrafted. So I have the card there so I don't forget. Yep, Castine Handcrafted. And now I'm going to cut out the pieces I need and I have to be very careful because I want to make sure that I use this for every single thing and I don't have to go digging somewhere else for more for more um, interfacing. So we start with the handles, which are So I meant the base, which is So I need um, one medium weight interfacing. So I need three of this particular size. And I think I have three here. One. So that's one, two, three to go with these ones. And I'll cut them all to size once I begin to um, interface them together. So that's A done. Then the next one is A and D done. Then for B, you need... If you're doing it, um, from the original pattern without the hack, you need two. But if you're using the hack, then you need only one to cut one interfacing because remember, we cut only one for the um, external. So you stay there, you stay there.
the interfacing really feels nice and sort of like sturdy. I think the weaves are a bit tighter than what we're normally used to, but it really, really, the feel, in, initial feel of it is really, really very nice. Let me do the curves. Just trying to get it on because I did that just now without it being on the fold. Okay, now it's on the fold. Ouch. Yeah, now it's on the fold. So to so interfacing done for A, interfacing done for B. When I need it, I'm sure I'm going to start trying to figure out what it was. And interfacing done for B. So now we're going to see. So interfacing done for that and that. Tiny piece I had. And that's part of B. Yep, C. Nope. 
So we'll keep this for something else and we come back here. And then we need C. So we need two interfacing for C as well, medium weight interfacing. And we need um, B of two. Take this one then. I can get the rest of the stuff in as well. Pause. Okay, makes sense. The thing with me is I think as I go along, so I don't have it all planned out and I'm not 100% sure exactly what I'm doing, but I sort of make it up as I go along. I'll be trying to follow the pattern as well. So I need to cut interfacing. Hi Moira, how are you? Okay, so that's two interfacing cut for C. I've already cut the handles D. Then the next one would be E, lining bottom, we need to cut two medium weight interfacing for that as well, and it's cut on the fold, so back to the drawing board that I shall need at some point. Um, fold this way. Now, this one should not matter much because it's just the interface. So if I do that,
fits in the other part of it on the fold as well. So I can just get both of them done at the same time. Trimming off all the excess. That is E cut out on. So for the interfacing, I've done E as well. So I need to do F and the G's. So the um, <clears throat> the medium weight interfacing you need for F, which is the slip pocket, is only one as well because the lining fabric we cut is only one, and we're just going to cut one piece out of this. We need G1, G2, and um, G3. Each one of those would need one. One, one, one medium weight interfacing.
So that is 4G2. It's G3, that's G2. is G1. And then the very last one, sorry, no, that was G3. And then the very last one. Oh, more than enough. This is very annoyed because it's such a tidy piece that now behave, please. Thank you. That should be it. So that is G1. So those are all the so those are all the pieces cut out nicely. Now we're going to start interfacing all the pieces together. Just get all my Boolean implements out of the way. So, tick, 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 tick. And I still have to cut the form, which I haven't cut yet, but I'll get to that. So, interfacing is done. And I need foam for A1 and for the pattern piece B. I would need two for the pattern piece B. I'm hoping I didn't need that piece, but if I do, I'll find it. So, okay, that looks nice and tidy. Tinks a wince a bit, but okay. So, are there any questions before I go on to the um to the foam? Hi, Deb. How are you? Nice to have you on board. I'm finding you, Moira, because you came late. So, um, I'll decide what the fine is later. So, we need in.
Yeah, I'm trying to see if I should cut the form stabilizer now or if I should cut it later. But if I cut it a bit bigger than it's required, then um, that would be. And I think I'm cutting only one for that. Then we need for B as well. So we're going to be needing form for this one as well. While it says we can cut it in step two, I just want to know that I have it there on the side. So for this, I'm using flex foam, single-sided fusible, but I'm not fusing. Though it says it's fusible, I shall not be fusing it together because, so it's going to be cut on the fold. And that would be roughly this, one fold, another one for another fold. That should be fine for that. So when I do need it, it's all. So now we're going to fuse all the pieces together. Now my ironing board needs a change. Every single time I, you know, I'm in the mood, I change the cover of my ironing board. For, for the past few months, I've not just had the urge to do anything, so it stays like that for now. So we start with the very first one and we fuse the medium weight interfacing to both A and D. I'll be cutting this to size because it's way, way, way longer than what I need. I just um, decided to cut it that way, but it's way longer than what's required. So 
cell. Let's see how it fuses. Up there for no apparent reason. Okay, let's try from the other side as well, in case there are any air gaps or anything in the middle. It seems to have fused nicely on that looks really good and doesn't seem to be coming off yep that really looks very very nice and it feels really really nice as well so i'm going to cut that down to size to what it says on the pattern so if you've cut yours to be the exact pattern of what you want just um just fuse your interfacing onto it and don't worry about having to trim or anything. But like I said, I just um, decided to cut a long piece. I know I need two of this. I need one of that. And um, actually, I should be able to get away with just one, one long piece. Yeah. That would go into a quilt at some point. I must be doing something wrong because it seems to scrunch up. Maybe I should stop ironing and just press because those are two different notions completely. Okay, so those are the pieces I need and they're all on there nicely, A and D. So all of A and all of D are done. Then the next piece is the B, which would be my outer fabric. Now, this is where, okay. This is the wrong side of this one. And the thing with wax fabric is as long as you, uh, as soon as you put the iron on it, it sort of goes limp because the wax in it <clears throat> is being melted and then you leave it and it cools down and then it becomes stiff again. So, don't be alarmed if that happens and you're using African wax and it just seems to go limp with the hot iron. It tends to sort of stiffen once it goes cold. But it could, it can be alarming because with the, I've always, always sort of worn African wax in one way or the other. But every single time I have to do the ironing, I'm just like, oops. I've destroyed it until I remember that yeah it does it does that sometimes Oops. 
So this is what I mean. All the white edges there, I'm just going to trim off once I'm done. Uh, where is the second one? There you are. And you are the wrong side. This one, this one was easy to pick out. And with some of them, both sides are so, so, so similar. The colors are so vibrant on both sides, you cannot tell them apart. Unless you look at the selvages before you start at all. And you've already figured out from the selvages because then the writing is on the right side when you're looking at the selvages. So just bear that in mind. Like I said. Press, don't iron. And I'm just using enough heat to sort of um, melt the glue. Now, this one is not properly centered. It's decalade a bit to the, to the left, but as a first go, it will be fine. I'll just show this side more than the other one. So that's um, the exterior B done. Then we go to C. Which is this teeny tiny interior top B, and we interface that together as well. Um, yes, Nova, every single because of the quality of the um African wax, um all of them don't come with the same high quality so depending on the type you get it's always safer to start on a lower sort of um setting before you go to a higher one because i'm going to do um on my african wax sort of facebook page i'm going to sort of do a test because i have some that easily melt under heat and i'll show you the difference between the two the one Samantha used for her bag, she said she actually ironed the whole thing on high heat and it was fine. So the quality of that one is really very good and it just depends on the quality. So I have some really, really, you know, horrible ones. You place an iron on them and they just melt. But then I do have the really, really good quality ones as well. So the ones with the horrible quality, I use them for tests and for trial clothes making or anything i just feel like testing out i use those but um so you just have to be careful and once you know exactly what sort of heat the particular one you have would you know would maintain then you can begin to use the higher heat but each fabric you get is different and it's the same with them um, it's been color fast as well because sometimes you get one, it's color fast, it doesn't have any problems, and the very next one you touch, it's like the color just runs and you wonder what's happening. It's just it's just the luck, you know, it's just luck with the whole thing. So just to be on the safe side, try on a nice low heat first. So that's C. Now 
now this is the reason why i always wear my african clothes because it is so hot right now okay i've done uh, a and d together the next is e Now this is quilting cotton and I can go, well, as far as, you know, as high as I want with them because I know that, yes, nothing would happen to them. But once I start with this one heat setting, I just carry on with it because it seems to work and it does exactly what I want it to do. Um, Cheryl, no, it doesn't cause any problems at all, as in the wax itself does not come off the fabric. It's just that, just imagine having um, candle wax on something, but the way it's been done, the wax is all, it's integrated into the fabric, so it's not like it washes out, unless you put it in water anyway. But when you iron it, it doesn't come off on anything, but because you iron it, Place something hot on it it melts the wax in the fabric and the fabric just sort of like goes limp but as soon as it's cold it goes nice and sturdy again so that's just something you need to bear in mind when you've um, when you're using it but it doesn't go on anything it doesn't cost my um, sewing machines to stick nothing at all And if you're going to be um, steaming your African wax fabric as you use it, before you start at all, it's always nice to sort of test out a tiny bit of it. So you can just cut off a tiny piece and um, throw it in water and see if it's color fast or not. Because um, even with the ones we wear as clothes, it's one of the things we do. We always sort of cut off part of the um, seam allowance and see if it's um, color fast or not. Because um, sometimes we need to mix it with other lighter materials based on, you know, what occasion it is or what we're doing. And you don't want every single thing rubbing off on all your other good clothes. So it's always nice to test it out. I'm having air gaps and I don't know why I'm having air gaps. Shouldn't be. Okay, those seem to be working well. Yep. Thank you. 
was quilting pricing is never ever an issue but when i'm making any other thing it's like i would rather skip all the sort of pressing bit but we quilt every single second i'm happy to go to the ironing board and you know press it nicely oh well i just guess it's the way i'm wired so that's g1 and that's G3. Okay. That is the slip pocket. So now I should have the A and D in this one nicely interfaced. And then we have B. Then we have B. I believe this is the D. Oh, sorry. The handles are the D, these ones down here. Then these are E, F, G1, G2, G3. So that is all all cut and interfaced. And um, I already cut out the foam. So um we'll take a break for today because um after doing all the hot work it's like i just hate having to go any further so um what we'll do is we'll stop here for today and then come back tomorrow and start with the sewing now the machine i'm using tomorrow i'm not sure if you've seen my me message the message i sent out earlier it's a machine I got about three years ago, but I've never ever taken it out of its box. Don't ask me why. It was a present I just bought for myself because I was feeling good. And it stayed in its box for three years. And I just got up today and I thought, today is the day. First day of a live. So it's out and I'll be using it as from tomorrow. Most of the functions, I don't have a clue. 
but tomorrow we'll work it out all together. It's a Juki DX7. So I shall see you all tomorrow. And thank you so much for being here. And um, if there are any questions, I will check and I sh I'll try and reply to every single question that I haven't already replied to. But thank you so very much, everybody. So that's all the cutting and all the interfacing done. And then tomorrow we go into sewing and putting every single thing all together and all of that will be cleared as well. So thank you and have a lovely evening, everybody. Bye. <laughs> I'm sure it will, Lizzie. My sewing machine will fulfill its destiny. <laughs>